up next on Human Services Forum. Tis the season for filing your 2011 income taxes. But wait, there's good news too, coming straight from the IRS to you. And is your family safe from the cold and the heat? Learn about some surprising household hazards, plus heating resources for families in crisis. Human Services Forum begins right now. Jan Callahan and welcome to the forum. We have news today of income taxes and tax credits. Every year we try to promote uh, the earned income tax credit and how it can assist with people who bring in a certain amount of money. Low income taxpayers who earn income less than $50,000. And to give you an idea of how that works and why we do it, I have Chris Neighbor, who is the Spec Territory Manager for Virginia and West Virginia, um, and uh, he's with the IRS. Willard Pretlow, Regional Coordinator for uh, free income tax preparation sites in the in the region and they're joining me to bring you some very useful information about this coming tax season especially if you have children and you earn less than fifty thousand dollars a year which is what catches a lot of people's attention that's right so anyway with that elaborate introduction I would love to see if we could get to the the meat of it and uh, part of what is trying to the word we're trying to get out is that there is an EITC Many people may have heard of it, but they may not know or paid attention because they didn't think it applied to them. And maybe now they may need that extra money. Mm -hmm. So EITC, yeah. what is it and what makes it what it is? Yeah, well, um, you know, thanks for having me, Jan. Um, the EITC is the Earned Income Tax Credit. It's a credit um, that was uh, passed by Congress in the 1970s, uh, <coughs> largely um, during the welfare reform uh, legislation, uh, you know, that was passed. Um, it is a credit that is administered uh, via the 1040, um, and it, it usually uh, low-income families or moderate-income families. It, it's not really a low-income credit. Uh, it can be low to moderate-income families. Uh, families that make um, up to $49,000 can claim it, and up to three qualifying children can be claimed also. Um, and the maximum credit for a family of three children is five thousand seven hundred and fifty one dollars great which, which is significant that's a lot of money and if you figure in a child tax credit and all those other things it can really add up absolutely mm -hmm. yeah. absolutely because that's other stuff but we also right uh, but now there are some basic qualifications to qualify for the earned income tax yeah. credit because this is a tax there's always the catch right that's right mm -hmm. I feel like uh, I'm on what not to wear mm -hmm. okay. that's right um, you have to have a valid social security number um, you, you must have earned income, such as wages or self-employment income. Traditionally, Social Security income uh, does not count. Mm -hmm. uh, and you must be a United States citizen or a resident alien to qualify. All right. And the qualifying children covers some territory, too, but that gets a little more uh, involved. Yes, absolutely. Um, as a matter of fact, um, what I would encourage folks to do uh, if, uh, is to go to irs.gov mm -hmm. to the EITC assistant okay. and that will help people figure out, you know, are the children in their household qualifying children for the purposes of the EITC? Right. Are they not? Um, in situations where you have uh, divorced couples, um, obviously they both can't claim the same child, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so they need to uh, be clear on that. Okay, we have on the screen the eligibility, just basically, um, the age of the person applying for that uh, may or may not have anything to do with being eligible, is that correct? That's, that's correct. Generally, um, if, you, if, if you're claiming the EITC and you have no children, mm -hmm. you have to be 25 to claim the EITC. Okay, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. and you cannot be a dependent of you can be living with somebody. Pair. Okay, That's yeah, right. you don't want to double dip there. That's right. Right. So, uh, but their basic requirements, as as is true often with even applying for assistance from the government, there are similar requirements, and also assets figure in, um, and that can change every year. In order to get this credit, you need to file a return, yes, and some people right. don't think that filing a return, they need to bother because they didn't make enough money to pay taxes. Willard, you are working with some volunteers right yes. now who are going to be preparing taxes. What is it that you hear um, or know or have read about the numbers of people that don't 
prepare taxes because they don't think they have. Well, bother. generally they don't think that their income qualifies them to even file for mm -hmm. a return. The best thing to do is, when in doubt, ask someone or file anyway. Mm -hmm. And through the filing preparation process, it will let you know if you need to follow through and file the return or not. Mm -hmm. So to avoid getting in trouble for not filing a return, go through the process and let the process let you know whether you need to file or not file. Mm -hmm. To hypothetically say, I'm not going to file this year, that's a dangerous decision <laughs> to make. Yeah, making that assumption is not, a, you don't, you know, you don't, um, you don't do that to the IRS. Yeah, I've, I've heard of taxpayers um, that come into a, a VITA site, and I, I know we'll talk about VITA here in a second. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll come in uh, for the first time, they've made $30,000 the last three or four years with ample uh, withholding. Um, they file their, their, their tax return and they get a refund uh, because of the earned income tax credit and, and child credits and, and, so, and they get a refund of $6,300. And then the great thing is they can go back three years and f file returns you know, for the last three years. Mm -hmm. So like Willard said, if in doubt, file the return. Right. Now some people may be a little intimidated by doing their own taxes or they may not know if they're doing it correctly. Um, the South Hampton Roads Earned Income Tax Credit Coalition is uh, here for that purpose. It's a number of organizations, faith-based as well as government, mm -hmm. local agencies, um, and other community service organizations that come together um, and promote this EITC and free tax preparation services, which is right. a big deal for people who are trying to find ways to to find money, you know, in yes. what they already have. Yes. Uh, so the Willard is working with the group and overseeing all of these sites, these volunteer income tax assistance or VITA sites. And we're just about ready to get underway, but we're here in the middle of uh, kind of helping the volunteers get through their certification. Yes, yes we are. Uh, right now we're in the training mode to uh, help the preparers be qualified mm -hmm. to do the returns through the IRS system. We use the IRS testing material and their training material to bring the persons who are assisting the taxpayers with their returns do it the correct way. Using the same material that the IRS uses in their office, we have that material and resource information at our sites. So we follow the exact same rules. The benefit of a person coming to a VITA site is they have someone there that can help them work through the process that can be difficult when you try it on your own. Mm -hmm. And you can get yourself stumped real <laughs> fast if you don't know what to do next. So by going to a VITA site, uh, we can help the person work through the process. We do the return with them, not necessarily for them. We do it with them and we can address those questions and answers that they typically may not know to ask themselves while they're doing their own return. Mm -hmm. So there's a benefit to doing that and it doesn't cost them a dime. And then not only are you helping them uh, complete their return, but you're also sending it to yes. the IRS, transmitting e -file. this. Yes, mm -hmm. we do the e-file process right there on the spot. Right, so that doesn't cost anything either. No, it doesn't. It may cost uh, maybe a short wait, because these are very popular locations, um, and one of them is in Norfolk at the Workforce Development Center, which is where mm -hmm. people come and apply for public benefits as well, so it's um, handy. Uh, some of the sites are walk-in, some are appointment only, and the numbers that we put up on the screen um, we'll spell that out for you as far as the sites that are up there now. They're still, we're still confirming some, so it's always a good idea to double check. Yes. When is the, the tax filing season officially beginning? When is the IRS going to begin accepting returns mm -hmm. from taxpayers? Officially, they don't begin until January 13th. Okay. So that's the first day that the IRS will begin to receive a return. Okay. So if you're anxious and you have your W-2s and you're ready to go now, you got to wait a few days. Okay, you yeah. still have to wait. Yeah. But, but on the flip side, uh, because of some uh, unique holidays in Washington, mm -hmm. D.C. this year, um, the deadline is April 17th, not April 15th. Okay. So we have an extra couple days to file our returns this year. Oh, okay. So you've got an extra couple of days, and many of the sites that we are that the, the coalition will have open, which is across Southampton Road. Yes, yes. Um, will well, some of them will be opening 
on Saturdays and Sundays. Right, and maybe in mid-January yes. um, mm -hmm. during that time. Mm -hmm. So again, just keep checking because the numbers and the dates of whatever site it is that you're interested in may not be up there yet right. uh, because they're still determining that and we're still working through the volunteers who want to make sure that everybody's covered. Um, so just keep checking because yes. there's loads of information online on the IRS site. Uh, we have an shreitc.com site as well, which gives you the local sites and, uh, and a phone number to call too. So there will be updates on that um, mm -hmm. as we go along. You've got, you've got your work cut out for you, though. We have a, you have a number of volunteers that are just from the community. Um, yes. Some of them are accounting students, I understand. And yes, we have mm -hmm. a CPA who came in last night. Uh, we have many uh, accounting students and the master's level and undergraduate level. So we have people from across the spectrum, many retired teachers, uh, many retired military. So we have a broad spectrum of volunteers who are coming back into the community to assist where they live and where they used to live. Mm -hmm. So it's a giving back and paying forward type of a process. Uh, we have been helped in our process, so it's now is time to help someone else. Mm -hmm. Which is great, and, and I see over the years, it's been six, seven years since this coalition's been together, that the volunteers have started to um, grow in a different way. Mm -hmm. And part of what you're saying is, you know, we have a CPA, we have some accounting students that are really now really getting involved, which is, is great news for the taxpayer mm -hmm. because they're quick learners. Right. And it demystifies the process yeah. if a college student walks into a VITA site and one of their classmates is there to assist them. Yeah, that's right. And plus they're getting great experience working with the public and actually real time, real mm, people right. scenarios. Well, everybody wins, we hope anyway. Absolutely. There's right. also quickly a roving service that will be provided, roving uh, tax services that will be offered this year. Yes, through. yes. We have another uh, coordinator who will be responsible for the various outlying communities. We may go to a work location mm -hmm. so an employer can have their employees returns done on location rather than them taking a day off and spend two, three hours or the whole day someplace else. Mm -hmm. We go to them and then the supervisors and our managers can let them go in shifts uh, to have their returns done. Mm -hmm. We also make it easier for them to go through that process by giving them an intake form that they fill in the information ahead of time, mm -hmm. which gives them opportunity to collect all that vital data information that they need to have anyway. Many times you go and have your taxes pre prepared and you get there and find that you have to go back home because there's a form or document mm -hmm. that you didn't bring with you, specifically the, uh, the Social Security cards for the children that you're going to be claiming on your return. We have to have that documentation to verify that this person is a legal dependent for this particular return. Mm -hmm. So it gives a person opportunity to gather all that information way in advance before they arrive at the tax preparation site. Well, great. We'll have more on the roving sites and some of the people and offices that have been joining in as partners. Um, some really good news, but that'll be on another show shortly, <laughs> shortly down the road. Chris, as uh, you are touring the states and seeing all of these things uh, being set up, I mean, how is it looking? A coalition here has been growing, but we're just one right. of many. Right. Mm -hmm. um, things are booming across Virginia and West Virginia regarding EITC and, and VITA. Um, but I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that here in, in you know, the Norfolk area, uh, your coalition, Southampton Rose EITC, just received a grant directly from the Internal Revenue Service, mm -hmm. and I understand also Walmart. So um, regionally, um, the effort is very strong, but right here in, in your hometown, uh, things are really booming and, and definitely heading in the right direction. Well, thank you for the vote of confidence. <laughs> Appreciate that. Yes, I'm involved too, I touch, you know. <laughs> and it's, it's an important thing to do, yes, and we is. hope that people right. will take advantage of this, because they could save $200, $300 for the fees that you get charged oh, yes. normally. Right. So right. We have a good run to people. And thank you. You guys are great, and I appreciate you coming on to share what will be, I think, a pretty busy tax season yes, and a good pleasure. one. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Thank you, Jane. <laughs> Don't go away, because Norfolk Fire Rescue is going to reveal some surprising dangers lurking in places you would least suspect. Home fire hazards plus heating assistance for eligible households when we come back. <laughs>
Here's a tip from the IRS. Hi, I'm Hector, and I work for the Internal Revenue Service. So what if you have to file your tax return, but you still have not received your W-2? Employers should send this to you by January 31st. Give it two weeks to arrive in the mail. But if you don't get it by February 14th, the first thing you should do is contact your employer. If you've moved, make sure they have your current address. Now, if you do that and you still don't get your W-2, then call us at 1-800-TAX-1040. That's 1-800-829-1040. We'll send a letter to your employer on your behalf. Just give us your name, address, phone number, social security number, and the name and address of your employer and when you work there. In the meantime, remember that you must file on time even if you don't receive your W-2. You can use Form 4852 as a substitute for your W-2. Just list your estimated wages and withholding on Form 4852 and attach it to your tax return. You can use a pay stub or similar statement to help you estimate the amounts. Then make sure you file your tax return on time. If later on you should receive your W-2 and discover you have to correct your tax return, just fill out Form 1040X to amend your return. Learn more at irs.gov. Welcome back. The holidays, the decorations, families, children, friends, new puppies and kittens, with all of that coming together under one roof and some chilly weather to boot, it's easy to overlook potential fire hazards in your own home. But they're in there, Wayne Wallace, who is with uh, Norfolk Fire Rescue and a fire inspector. He's joining us with a list of suspects, and we've got a few of them um, demonstrating kind of how to get rid of the suspects and the fire that it might start right. um, and uh, also to talk a little bit about some of these really surprising places that people can fix and clean up and not have to worry as much. Right. Poor housekeeping I think was the... Yes uh, it is. Well thank you for having me. Um, housekeeping is a big thing uh, yeah. as far as fire safety in your home. We want to make sure you don't have a, a clutter in your house collecting a bunch of things throughout the rooms and it just adds to the, to the fire load in your house. So you really want to keep things clean. Uh, we're in the time of the year where we have more fires than any other time of the year. You know, fall and winter time, we're spending a lot more time indoors. So we're, you, people that smoke or stay inside more, we cook inside more, we use fireplaces, portable heaters. So unfortunately, we're in the time of year where we have more fires. So I want to bring up a couple of things that you want to look out for in your house and one would be smoke detectors. We talk about that every year, but uh, more and more homes have smoke detectors today. But the problem we're finding is more and more of those homes have smoke detectors that are not working. Uh, they don't have batteries in them. Uh, the smoke detector has broken. They haven't put a new one in. Uh, for example, this one right here is from an actual fire a few years ago, where, as you can see, there is uh, a $2 battery missing uh, because it, because this $2 battery is, was missing, this person is no longer here. It's so very, very important to have working smoke detectors in your home. And there's new models on the market these days. For example, these two right here. Um, you can actually silence these with a remote from your TV. If it's a nuisance alarm, say some smoke from your cooking got to the uh, detector, mm -hmm. you can actually take the remote from your, your uh, TV and actually point at the detector and silence it. It stops people from taking the battery out and killing the power to it. So okay. these are really nice to, on the market uh, today. There's also smoke detectors that come with batteries, lithium batteries. Mm -hmm. The batteries can actually last six to 10 years. Wow. So you don't have to change your battery every year. Mm -hmm. You still should test it every month to make sure it works. Right. But so there's new products on the market today that you need to look at for, uh, for your home. Smoke detectors can really save your life in the event of a fire. Right. So. You also have a, a carbon monoxide detector in here, which well, is uh, one of those odorless, clear exactly. things you don't see and even it's know. It's an odorless, it's tasteless now. gas that you, 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 know, you, you don't know it's there. It comes from fossil fuels in your home. If you use gas uh, heat, oil heat, if you use gas fireplace, uh, wood, even wood burning stove, those are the type of appliances that will put out carbon monoxide. So we highly recommend that you have a detector in your home. And this particular model is a plug-in type. You can, a, a smoke detector has to go high up the ceiling because smoke rises and when a fire first happens. Mm -hmm. 
Well, carbon monoxide detector can be low at the outlet or high at the ceiling because carbon monoxide weighs almost the same as air does. So it'll go higher or low in the room. So a plug-in type will work just as well. And it's convenient. You just plug it in. Put it in your outlet. Right. That's great. Yeah. Now, these fire um, smoke alarms that you're talking about, I don't know if it's true of the um, carbon monoxide detector, too. Right. There's a program that Norfolk Fire Rescue actually offers for yes. people. Norfolk has a smoke detector, a free smoke detector program. If you call 664-6604 mm -hmm. and request a smoke detector, we'll ask you for your information, your address, your, your name, and things like that. Then we will send out a fire truck, and they'll be glad to put in a smoke detector for you for free. And we're not the only. Every city in this area pretty much has a free smoke detector program, mm -hmm. and it's just it's really important to have them. So you can call that number and request one. Okay, so, so that is good to know because people might think, well, you know, I'm just, I don't know if I really want to bother putting out the money, or I don't have it, or but this is right. just a great way to to get it done. And you just call, and make an appointment. Is that right? You just call, give them the information. What we do is we'll we'll. Uh, give the information out to one of the fire stations and they'll set it up to come out. They'll call you and set it up to come out and install it for you for free. Okay, great. So it's a big thing for you now. Another thing I, I wanted to bring up also, not only you should have smoke detection in your home, you should have a, a fire extinguisher. And what I thought was kind of neat was I, what I brought here today, this is one of the first fire extinguishers they made back in the early uh, 1900s. Actually, uh, late 1800s to early 1900s, this is a, a type of glass device filled with water or sometimes chemicals and if you had a small trash can fire you would actually throw it at the fire and it breaks and it disperses the chemical or the water onto the fire. Uh, so I just want to bring a little bit of history yeah. as far as you know we've come this far now with fire extinguishers. Yeah, he's got all Big case difference. of these and they're different colors too. It's really right. quite pretty. Right. They look like light bulbs with water in them. Right. <laughs> but who knew, you know? Yep, I mean yep. that's a, the portable fire extinguisher right. was born. Right, it was more than 100 years ago. Exactly. Uh, the new ones today, we recommend that you have one near the kitchen, maybe one in the garage, mm -hmm. and one on the second level of your home where you have them. Now, what I would recommend to people is just make sure the gauge is always in the green and the, and the unit's always in good shape, mm -hmm. okay? And that you can get to it. And that you can get to it easily. <laughs> People tend to, that's a very good point you brought up, they'll take it and they'll hide it in their closet or something or they'll put it underneath the bed. And when you need it, you get nervous and you forgot, forgot where you put it. Uh -huh. So you need to keep it out visible every day that you see it. That's a very good point. Now, I also recommend, for example, this is one that's made by Kitty. It's got a manufacturer's warranty of six years. I recommend after the warranty is up, I would go get a new one. Even if it still shows in the green, mm -hmm. after five or six years, I would go out and get a new one. It's just not going to be as reliable as you'd like it I to would, be? Uh, yes. Yeah. Is this uh, the size that generally people would get? Are they smaller and larger they sizes? They have smaller there? ones. I, uh -huh. This is the size I would recommend. This is about what they call a five-pound extinguisher, and this is an ABC type, which means it does all three types of fires. Okay. Right. They do have a smaller one, but this is the perfect size, I think, for the home that you should have. Okay. Good. So. Well, this is um, free interesting stuff. We also have, of course, the Christmas tree lights that you can get uh, that emit heat and those that do not, right. now, which can make a difference. Christmas tree light, uh, Christmas lights, whether it be on the tree or outside the house, uh, they're a lot more efficient today. They don't use as much electricity. You have some that are LED and some that are smaller bulbs. Read the manufacturer's instructions, what I can tell you. Some of them will say you can string together three lights. Some of them, you can buy commercial lights, you can string up to six strings together. Read the manufacturer instructions and don't go beyond. If it says only th plug in three together, only plug in three together. Don't try and plug in more because you can draw too much current that could actually cause a fire. And that's the last thing you want to have happen at, at any time of right. the year. And I recommend your, your Christmas lights, only leave them plugged in when you're at home. If you got to leave the house for more than 20 minutes or so, unplug all your lights. When you go to bed at night, unplug them. If you're going to go on vacation, don't leave them plugged in all the time. Unplug them when, they're not, when you're not home or, and when you're in sleep. It's very important. Is that indoor and outdoor? Indoor lights? and outdoor. Uh, Christmas trees. Our, our real Christmas trees are a wonderful thing to have, mm -hmm. but they're very, very dangerous mm -hmm. if you don't properly take care of them. When you buy your Christmas tree, check to make sure that the, the, the leaves aren't coming off very easily. That tells you it's a real dry tree. Yeah. Once you get it home, make a fresh cut on the bottom of it. When you put it in your holder, put water in it and keep water in it every day, okay? Mm -hmm. And once the season or once the holiday's over, get it out of your house. Um, very dry Christmas tree is very flammable. Uh, <laughs> for example, I saw a neighbor have their Christmas tree out of the curb uh, in March of one year. So it made me wonder where that Christmas tree was between 
the holidays in March. If it was still inside the house, it's very dangerous. Wow. Okay. Well, you've got it from the, you know, from a good source that you don't do those types of things and just pay attention. Don't right. forget that it's there and right. enjoy it for what it's worth and then be safe. Right. Also want to mention that the Department of Human Services um, does administer um, the energy assistance program. So if you um, um, are in need of, or an urgent need of um, payment of for heating fuel or deposit, call 664-6035. This is the crisis component for the fuel assistance program that will go into effect as of January 2nd. So as of January 2nd, they will be accepting applications. And thank you so much, Wayne, for joining us. Thank you for, thank you for joining us. We'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.